Hey guys, this is Mr. Roxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is August the 9th, it is Tuesday, and what we are going to do today is just have a little bit of fun and figure out how you can become a millionaire by the age of 55. Now, what I'm going to use for my particular example for this video is actually um, the uh, dividend reinvestment program as it relates to REITs. So uh, a REIT is a real estate investment trust, and I'm focusing on these particularly because many of them pay a very high dividend. And uh, what I'm going to do is walk you through a couple of REITs that you could possibly consider investing in. And of the five, I'm going to pick um, maybe uh, two of them that I would recommend. And I'm going to explain right at the end why it is that I've chosen these and what you can do with this information. So the five that I've chosen in no particular order are Bridge Investment Group Holdings, which pays a dividend of 6.1, EPR Properties, which pays a dividend of 6.1, Global Medical REIT, REIT, as I said, is a real estate investment trust, pays a dividend of almost 7%, Medical Properties Trust pays a dividend of 6.7%, and Simon Property Group pays a dividend of 6.26. Um, obviously, that's as of today. Dividends are expressed in dollars, and the percentage is based on the uh, current annual dividend yield uh, in dollars divided by the share price, and that gives you the percentage. So in other words, these five REITs are sort of equal, uh, at least from the point of view that they all pay a dividend of between 6 and 7%. However, they do not necessarily hold the same assets. So if you want to invest in a REIT, it's worth your while to dive a little bit deeper. I've just added a little paragraph here. I'm not going to read this just for the sake of time, but it tells you sort of uh, what the company holds, $38 billion in real estate. Assets focus on select US real estate verticals, including residential, rental, office development, logistics, properties, et cetera. Uh, whether you want to be invested in real estate at all, of course, is a separate issue. So it's always a good idea to do your own due diligence in this regard. So let's take a look at these in a little bit more detail. So this is Bridge Entertainment, Global Medical and Simon Properties. Um, on every slide, I'm just going to highlight uh, a section or two that I want to uh, sort of draw your atten attention to. Uh, the first thing we notice here is that there is not a lot of volume being traded uh, in these particular REITs right now. You can see that the volume at the time I took this snapshot uh, is sort of a third or half or less than um, a third of the average daily volume. So uh, when there's not a, a lot of volume being traded, you also don't expect too much volatility in the price. For the technical guys, and I know there's always a couple of technical guys, the stochastic score, this is the 20 day, day raw stochastic score that we're gonna look at as a reminder, if it's above 80, it's considered to be overbought, which means uh, that's probably not a time for you to get in. And if it's less than 20, it's considered undersold. Now, on the uh, five that I've selected, there are only two, um, Bridge and Simon Properties, that have, has a stochastic over 80. However, the stochastic is also not a hard and fast rule, so you cannot just make uh, a decision as to whether you want to get in or exit based on the stochastic. But um, some people swear by the technicals, so uh, I'm including it just for the sake of reference from that point of view. The other thing that's also interesting is when we look at the analysts, you can see there's a huge swing in opinion. So just a month ago, uh, sort of everyone said sell. And now today, uh, very few people are saying sell. In fact, EPR flipped from 56% sell to 56% buy. And you can see Simon property on the far right here. A month ago, it was 100% sell. Now it's only 40% sell. So a bit of change there in terms of sentiment as it relates to REIT. I'm not sure if that's necessarily an expression of confidence for the entire real estate portfolio in general or housing, but certainly uh, in specific reference to these five REITs, the sentiment has changed quite a bit. If we look at the performance here, I'm gonna ignore five days because we're not day trading, uh, and even one month, we look at three months, and you can see they've kind of just been sputtering along. Uh, no great shakes here, 4% plus, you know, 10% negative. Uh, six months, 20%, negative plus 17, negative 27, negative 26, negative 25. Uh, now, just philosophically here, I just want to pause for a second and, uh, and, and just you know, share with you the, the basic 
concept, which is fundamental to being a stock market investor uh, in the first place. If you are uncomfortable with your stock portfolio being down 20%, for example, then you should also be uncomfortable when your stock portfolio is up 20%, for example, right? So you cannot say just because it's negative, your, uh, whatever it is that you've selected as your investments after you've done your due diligence, if it pulls back 20% and that makes you uncomfortable, then you probably should be as uncomfortable when it's up 20% instead of just being happy, right? So philosophically, that's something that you may want to keep in mind if you're investing in the stock market uh, in general. doesn't matter what you're invested in, in terms of which stocks you've chosen, but you need to be aware that those things are the same, whether they're up or down. If you are uncomfortable at 20%, you're going to be very uncomfortable at 40%. So, um, you know, it's not just being cautious. It's also uh, deciding what your level of risk tolerance is, right? So a couple of things here, uh, key statistics. It's always interesting for me when I look at the annual sales and I look at the market cap. So I'm just going to use Bridge here as an example. Bridge has annual sales of $330 million and a market cap of $487 billion, uh, million. Now, when you look at these numbers, you kind of look at it and you go like, wow, this company um, is generating almost 70% of its market cap in sales is huge. Look at the others, they're almost the same, 13, 15, 16, 14%. Um, you know, so these are more consistent and more the same, whereas this is an outlier. Uh, generally, when I compare stocks, I'm looking for outliers, I'm looking for things that uh, might be wrong or different or jump at me for whatever reason. It might be a red flag or it might be a green flag in terms of uh, what I'm looking at, but you need to look for these anomalies when you're looking at the stocks. A couple of snapshots just to uh, dive a little bit deeper on the five of them. I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to tell you how you can become a millionaire before you reach the uh, ripe old age of 55. In other words, before you become an old guy like me, uh, you should be able to easily sock away a million or more. Bridge, you can currently buy it for about 17 bucks. It's sitting just left of center on its 52-week range. It's got a PE ratio of only three, 3.6 in fact. The dividend, as I mentioned, is a dollar as expressed as a percentage on the $17 stock price is about 6.2%. At a glance here, looking at bridge, not too much wrong. Almost, uh, you can almost check all the boxes and say, this one looks pretty good, bridge. How about EPR? Well, uh, not necessarily the same as bridge. It's $52, that's the, uh, the current price you can buy in for. It's sitting just to the right of center on its 52 week range. So it's trading a little bit higher. Uh, it's, it's got positive EPS, but uh, the red cross here is next to the PE ratio of 29. The price earnings ratio is, if it's above 15, then you need to do a much deeper dive and do some proper due diligence before you buy anything with the PE ratio of greater than 15. So this is almost two times 15. The reason why I use 15 as a benchmark is because that's sort of the average of the S&P 500. So if the best uh, largest, most successful 500 companies in the United States uh, as, a, as a metric that I can use as a PE ratio on average of around 15. I don't want to buy something that has a PE ratio that's two times higher than the S&P 500 average, right? So that's something that you can always look at. And then of course, the annual dividend yield year is pretty uh, good as well. $3.30 is what it's paying on an annualized basis, which is yielding 6.24%. Uh, as a percentage of the current price, which is almost $53. How about global medical REIT? This one you can buy for 12 bucks. It's trading low, it's the nearest 52 week low. However, it has a PE ratio of 61. And that uh, immediately is a scary number and uh, tells me to potentially run away. Annual dividend yield is good though, 84 cents, yielding almost 7%. Whether it's sustainable or not, I don't know. And that's one of the things that you wanna look at when you look at whether you want to invest in the company at all, yes or no. How about Simon Property Group? So Simon Property Group is the last one I'm looking at here. Uh, this one, much like the first one, Bridge, looks pretty good. The current price is uh, $107. It's uh, sitting way left of center on the 52-week range. So it looks like it's a decent time uh, and price to enter at. The PE ratio is 16. It's okay, you know, it's sort of in line with the S&P 500 average, which I said was about 15. And you have an annual dividend yield of $7. $7 is a percentage of 107 bucks the stock price. 
is yielding 6.43 at the current stock price. So of the two, Bridge and Simon Property look um, the best. I don't have a position in any of the five of these. Um, I do have one REIT, and I previously had a REIT I liked very much, AGNC, but it pulled back a lot. So I exited that position and took some profit. So right now, um, I uh, could potentially add a REIT to my portfolio. But uh, if I had to add one of these five, uh, I would probably uh, do a little bit of due diligence and a deeper dive on Simon Property and Bridge. So I did mention at the start of the video that I'm going to tell you how you can become a millionaire by the time you uh, get to the ripe old age of 55. And uh, this is just math. This has got nothing to do with what you invest in. You just want to make sure that you can generate a return of around 15% on an annualized basis that you can compound. And if you're young, it's uh, obviously also much easier to reinvest your dividends because hopefully you have a job and you're not relying on your investments or your dividend income or other fixed income in order to support your lifestyle, right? So you want to start uh, getting into the market as early as possible. And what you want to try and, uh, try and do is achieve a 15% annualized compounded growth uh, with a DRIP. A DRIP is a dividend reinvestment program. If you can do that, this is what happens. So I gave you a quick mathematical example here. And as I said, it's just math. It doesn't matter what you invest in. If you're 25 and you can uh, you know, get to a point where you have about $20,000, and obviously it doesn't matter what the currency is. So if you uh, are in a different country and you have different currency, it uh, doesn't matter where you are. I'm just using this as a number, right? So let's say you've saved up $20,000 by the time you're 25, and your portfolio is going to double every five years. Then it's going to become 40, then 80, then 160, 320, 640, and then 1.2 million, 1.3 million by the time you get to 55. How do you get to 15% though? And this is what I said is just math. So you, if you invest in something like a REIT that pays a dividend of over 6%, you need to generate an extra 9% or so, call it 10% um, in stock market returns in order for your portfolio to generate 15% per year. Sometimes you're going to get lucky, like um, most of the people watching this channel uh, are investors in Occidental Petroleum. So uh, if you bought Occidental Petroleum over the past two years and your um, cost basis is $10, $12, whatever, now the price is like 60 bucks, you know, you're up uh, six, five times, six times, whatever the case might be, There's, there, there may always be one um, equity in your portfolio that right sizes your whole portfolio. In other words, that gives you that 10%. And then in order to get to 15, you wanna get some dividends going that you can reinvest if you have the ability to do so. And that's how you're gonna get to 15. And that's literally really just math. The, uh, the other important point there when I say it's, it's just math is um, to keep in mind that the most money that you could possibly lose on any stock is the amount that you invested, right? So if you put, $1,000 into one particular stock and the company goes bankrupt. The most you can lose is $1,000. However, using my same example of Occidental Petroleum, if you put $1,000 into Occidental Petroleum two years ago, then that's now worth $6,000. So when you get that kind of a swing or, or uh, an uptick on one particular equity, it right-sizes your entire portfolio because you are going to have some stocks. They're not going to go necessarily go bankrupt, but you are going to have stocks that pull back and other stocks that go up. The fact of the matter is this, if you have like five stocks, and I'm not saying you must have five REITs because you can diversify and have five um, stocks that include a REIT, a high, pay, a high dividend paying energy stock like Exxon or Chevron or something like that. You can have a high paying dividend stock like a bank. You know, So you can have five different stocks, five different equities. They don't have to be the same. But if they average out for you, for instance, on dividends, uh, six, seven, 8%, then you only have to get the other uh, half of the 15% on stock market returns. Some of the stocks are gonna pull back and some of the stocks are gonna go up. And what you want to do is see if you can find an undervalued stock on which you can get like a 5X, 10X, even a 20X return, because it'll fix your whole portfolio and make the entire portfolio look great. The bottom line is mathematically speaking, rather than equity specific, you need to generate 15% per year to double the value of your portfolio every five years. And that's without adding any additional investment in investments into your portfolio. In other words, when I use the example of starting off with $10,000, I'm assuming that you did nothing else or $20,000. When you get there, 
you did nothing else. You never added more cash to it. You just let it double every five years and you still end up at 1.28 million, right? So if along the way, hopefully, as you're earning money, you also invest more money, that uh, $1.28 million could be a far greater number. So that's just a little bit of um, wealth creation advice using uh, dividends and compounded growth and reinvested dividends and time, uh, especially if you can start when you're young as a guide to how you can get to a million dollars or more by the time you get to the age of 55. Hope it's helpful, at least to someone. On that note, this is Mr. Oxy signing off, saying thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.